Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another session of ENG3E Term 2A, brought to you by Wassa Distance Education Center. I am your instructor, Mike Laverty, and today's date is Wednesday, March the 8th, 2023. We are on Class 18 of ENG3E, that is College Workplace English, so we are wrapping up our discussion of Unit 3. Today we will talk about the culminating activity uh, from, from Unit 3. So we're going to be delving into that culminating activity and having a look at the assignments that you're going to need to complete to to get that done. So that is a that's that's uh, a journey across culture. So more on that in, in just a few moments before we get our uh, announcements and some important uh, homework out of the way. So we are on week five of term 2A. This is a nine week course. So after after this week, we will have our March break. So no classes next week. No, the, the WASA office is closed. I believe that many of the learning centers may be closed as well. So after week five, we have a week off. And then once we're back on Monday, March the 20th, we will have week six, seven, eight, and nine. And that will be the end of term 2A. And so with that in mind, that, that last day for term 2A is April the 14th, 2023. That's the, uh, that's a Friday, last day of that week. And graduation day is June 15th, 2023. So it's about 15 weeks from now, a little bit less, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, so about 15 weeks. So I, I mentioned that yesterday. Just to just to let everybody know that you you certainly have enough time left to finish off a credit, possibly two if you're you know if you're really on top of things. But again, you know, and I'll I'll, I'll discuss the suggested progress for this class where you should be because you know I strongly advise against trying to cram in you know uh, a unit in in you know less than nine weeks less than the term you know I would pace yourself and know that you could easily get a credit done and I know that especially if you're getting close to graduating there there's certainly the temptation is to add on another chorus but that's certainly a discussion that I would suggest you reach out to the WASA office and we can have a you can have a have a talk with one of the counselors as they're really good at this and they've seen it happen many, many times with previous students. So that'd be a good opportunity to, to phone them and to reach out and to, you know, make a, make a plan for, for getting your diploma. So units one wrapped up, unit two wrapped up. We will, uh, today and tomorrow, we'll have unit three taken care of. And then after the break, we will start fresh on units four and five. And looks like we'll have plenty of time to discuss the final exam. So if you're listening out there live on 91.9 FM, thanks for joining us. You can always phone the studio at 1-807-737-4017 or the 1-800 number. That's 1-800-465-7144. Or by joining us on Zoom by going to zoom.us clicking the join button at the top right and putting our meeting ID in. That's 417-6699-799. And keep checking out those YouTube videos. Share them with your friends. Let them know they're out there. Laverty Wassa. And I teach ENG. 3E, 4E, and OLC 40. So you'll find all three courses on my YouTube channel. Uh, 
OLC 4.0's got the full 36 classes I did in in term 1B. And of course, I am teaching ENG 3E and 4E right now. So you'll see those playlists uh, start to grow as I complete classes in them and upload my finished classes. Okay, just wanted to mention that you can reach out to me directly at uh, through email. That's M Laverty, so M L A V E R T Y at N N E C Schools dot org. You can find me on Facebook, so you can either add me as a as a friend on Facebook or you can just simply communicate with me on Messenger both are fine so that's email Facebook and of course you can phone the WASA office and speak to me directly at 1-807-737-1488 extension 2211 if you get the receptionist you can just ask for Mike and you can phone the 1-800 number so 1-800-667-3703 if you don't if I am I'm usually at my desk if I'm not at my desk I am you know I'm, I'm usually in the studio teaching if I'm not at my desk I'm in the studio teaching so if you if you don't hear from me then just leave me a voicemail and I will get back to you as soon as I get back into the office. So here's your suggested progress. So if you've been taking this course for four and a half weeks, more or less, then you should have made contact with me, either through email, messenger, or phone. Read the study guide, uh, units one, unit two, and unit three. So that means you've um, read um, the the handout itself, not necessarily all of the associated readings in our textbooks. Uh, completed all assignments from Unit 1 and completed most of the assignments from Unit 2. And so that would be, you know, um, you'd have all the textbook readings done as well for Unit 1. And should have most of Unit 2 taken care of at this point. All right, so we will delve into today's lesson. So our, our game plan for today is to, as it's the third class of the week, we will look at an article of the day. This one is about Susan uh, Aglukark, who we, we, we looked at her song Shemaya last week. So we'll continue our discussion uh, about this Inuit artist, and we'll, we'll look at an article that was written about her that was published uh, not too long ago. And we will have a look at that culminating assignment, which is a journey across cultures. Learning goals for today are to review the parts of speech, do a close reading of a newspaper article, uh, especially the headline, and that's where the parts of speech are gonna come in, and you will take notes on the required elements of the unit three culminating activity. So what I'm gonna do is I will go through the instructions found for the culminating activity in your unit handout and then just break down those required elements and make sure there's no no question about what's expected of you what you're supposed to do for this assignment and then you know if if you if you read the assignment and you watch this class and you still have some questions or you're unsure about how to get started, that'd be a great opportunity to to reach out to to myself about the about that culminating activity. So I'll do my best to explain it today, but of course, you know, for any of these assignments, if 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 you still have questions and still are wondering how to get started or something about the assignment you're just not sure about, then of course reach out to me and I will help you out directly. So your success criteria is to check your understanding of the parts of speech. So we, we've already talked about this, but I just want to uh, do, a, do a little check-in just to make sure you do understand these nine parts of speech and can identify them 
in a real world example and you will brainstorm a list of topics and subtopics that you can research to complete the unit 3 culminating activity so that assignment does require some some research on your part and then you're sharing that research with myself and then commenting on what you found All right, so this, this article was published by Canadian, Canadian Musician Magazine. So that's a, a great publication. I used to have a subscription to it many years ago. And when I worked at the, pu when I worked at the public library, they had a subscription to the magazine, so I would read it that way. So the, the headline reads, Susan uh, Aglukark to receive the Juno's Humanitarian Award. And there's a lovely photo of, of Susan right here. So that's the headline. We've got our photograph. We've got our byline. The byline tells us who wrote it, where they published it, when they published it. So... Michael Rain wrote the article. It was published in Canadian Musician Magazine, and it was published on July 12th, 2022, so just this past summer. And the photo caption reads, Acclaimed Inuk singer, songwriter, and prior three-time Juno Award winner Susan Aglukark is the recipient of the 2022 Humanitarian Award. Photo credit by Denise Grant. So that's our photo credit and our caption. And these are the conventions of a newspaper article. So we, we've been talking about different forms of, of, uh, of, of communication and having a discussion about form and purpose and talking about the media. So different forms of media have or, or different different I guess categories or kinds of media like magazines and newspaper they have the specific format of the article and that article will have conventions and you know the conventions are just the way that it's just the way that things are done and there's sometimes a good reason for the way they're done sometimes it's just the way they've always been done and sometimes the conventions can change but for the most part um, they, they, they kind of remain the same. So a newspaper or magazine article will have a headline, a byline, usually a photograph, a photo credit, and of course the body of the text. So that headline reads, Susan Aglukark to receive the Juno's Humanitarian Award. So that's the headline. And if we break it down by its parts, actually before we do that, let's have a quick review of our ah I thought I had included ah I'm just checking my slide decks ah did not have it in there but that's okay So Susan Aglukark is a noun it's a proper noun it's a specific person place or thing and two is a preposition. So prepositions are relationship words. So, you know, other examples would be from, beside, under, after, and in this case, two. So Susan Aglukark to receive is the verb. That's what she. Uh, that's what she will do. She will receive the. So that's an article. The English language has three articles: a, an, and the. They're used before a noun. In this case, Juno's. So she will receive the Juno's, and so she's receiving an award, but not just any award because the Juno's gives out many awards. It's a humanitarian award. So adjectives and nouns go together in pairs. 
where you know adjectives are modifying words and in this case the word humanitarian is modifying the noun award so the subject of the my subject is Susan my predicate or my main verb is receive so Susan receive award and that's the object of the sentence So way back when I explained that, you know, the the basic construction of a sentence in English is a subject, verb, and an object. There's um, something or someone that's the main focus of the sentence. And there's a verb that tells us what that person does, what's done to them, or it tells us um, about their um, a state of being they're in you know, um, an emotion or some kind of a description about that thing. And then you have an object, which is the thing that the subject acts upon, right? It's, it's the thing they do or the thing that's happening to them. Or in this case, it's the, the thing that's being given to them. And so that is, uh, you know, in most English sentences, follow that subject, verb, object pattern. There are, of course, exceptions to that, but that's the basic, the basic construction. Have a, a quick look at the article and just see if we can highlight some, some points from it as we um, try to, you know, analyze forms and to pick up some tips that we can we can use in our own our, our own writing. So the article starts off: the Canadian Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. C Cara C A R A S. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Anytime you introduce an acronym, it's good to spell out the acronym in full, then put the short form in brackets, and then every time you use that organization in your article, you will use the bra you'll, you'll use the uh, acronym form. So KRS has announced that acclaimed Inex singer songwriter and three time Juno Award winner, comma Susan Aglukark, comma. So anytime you you bring somebody up and then you give more information about them, that additional information will be set off by commas, dashes, or or brackets. So she'll be recognized with the 2022 Humanitarian Award presented by Music Canada. Renowned for her unique blend of Inuit folk, country, and pop, uh, pop music, comma, Aglukark is becoming honored for her long-standing dedication to improving the lives of children and youth in northern indigenous communities. In 2002, in 2012, comma, so that's an introductory phrase. So we, we've talked about those before. So anytime you use a phrase like that, you put a comma after it. And introductory phrases are great. They give the reader context. In this case, they tell the reader when something happened. So in 2012, comma, she started the Arctic Rose Project, comma, which received charitable status in 2016 and became the Arctic Rose Foundation to support Northern Inuit, First Nation, and Métis youth through the creation of Indigenous-led arts-based after-school programs as well as other engaging cultural and crea creative projects. Today, comma, sometimes the introductory phrase is one word, the Arctic Rose Foundation operates in three communities across Nunavut. Presented annually, comma, the Humanitarian Award recognizes philanthropic efforts from Canadian artists and industry pioneers who have made a meaningful impact on social welfare around the world. Um, philanthropy, or in this case, uh, philanthropic, which is, um, you know, philanthropy, it literally means the love of humanity. So phil means to love. You know, a, a, a philosopher is a, is a lover of wisdom. Sophus is, is uh, Greek for, for wisdom. So uh, anthropy or anthro is man or humanity. So a philanthropist is someone who loves humanity and they love it so much that they uh, do lots of awesome charitable things like uh, this singer-songwriter has done to, to earn this award. Yeah, philosophy, philanthropy, um, Let's see if I can. Uh, Philadelphia, that's the, the, the city of brotherly love.
So previous award winners were Brian Adams, Neil Young, Sarah McLaughlin, and the Tragically Hip. So we've got an example of commas being used to set off items in a list. We have a quote from the artist. It is an honor to receive this award and a privilege to have had the opportunity to help create safe spaces for Northern Inuit and Indigenous youth to explore their own potential and forge cultural connections through Indigenous-led programs. Comma, quotation mark. So um, when we quote someone, we include a quotation mark at the start of the quote. Um, doesn't matter if we're starting the quote, starting our sentence with the quote, or using the quote in mid-sentence. So we we start the quote where their words begin, and then we put a comma, then the ending quotation mark, and then the slug, which just tells us who said it. So said Aglutark. The quote continues, quote, I am proud of uh, the work our team at the Arctic Rose Foundation has achieved so far and look forward to expanding our footprint across the north to bring more culturally grounded, adaptable programming to young people and help engage, support, and inspire them in all aspects of their lives. So she used three verbs at the end. Um, she used two adjectives to describe the program, so culturally grounded and adaptable. So that tells you what type of program it is. And she used verbs like engage, support, and inspire them to tell us what that program is going to do. So that's just some tips you can use in your own writing. All right, which brings us to our culminating activity, a journey across cultures. You are, so we'll go through the, the unit, or we'll go through the culminating activity requirements one by one as they are described in your in your unit three handout. And then I will conduct some research my on my own and delve into some subtopics that you might want to include for your assignment. So you are so culminating activity, a journey across cultures. You are to choose any three of the following topics. Using the internet and your knowledge of it, find some information about your chosen topics. The search engine Google would be a good place to start. And that's what we'll do today. So we're going to review some strategies for looking for information online and, you know, having a plan for, you know, conducting research online. Just some things we should avoid, some things we should focus on, and just, just giving you a general strategy for finding what you need. Those seven topics are a visit to another country, your choice, a high school education in British Columbia, adoption services in Canada, the importance of volunteering, immigration to Canada, violence and the media, and Inuit culture. So we've, we've learned a little bit about Inuit culture, not too much through our exploration of of uh, Susan uh, Aglukark, but we could, you know, we could certainly stand to learn a bit more uh, ab about the about this culture. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta pick one of those one of those options. So a visit a visit to another country, your choice. Option two, a high school education in in BC. Option three, adoption services in Canada. Option four, the importance of volunteering. Option five, immigration to Canada. Option six, violence in the media. And option seven, Inuit culture. So the first part of your culminating activity is the presentation. So your task will be to download and print at least two pages for each topic, including any pictures and or graphics you find. Add a title page for each topic. So you'll have three in total seven marks per topic for a grand total of 21 marks. So you'll have three title pages, three, um, I guess three examples, I guess they're not examples, but the, you know, three actual, um, you know, three collections of research on each of your topics. So for this part, for, th for this first part, you're just, you're just simply finding the information, gathering it up, giving it a title page and handing it in. So that's that's all you're really doing for the for this first uh, assignment, the the first 21 marks you're going to get. The second part of the assignment is your summaries. 
So you'll be using two of your three topics. So you, you pick three of those seven, gather the research on it, do a title page for each one, and then you use two of your three topics. So you only pick two. So one gets dropped off and you, you pick two of them. And then you prepare a summary of the content you have found for each one. So you'll talk about the content you found. In other words, you know, you'll comment on what you have discovered and read in your own words. So you're, you, you are summarizing, you are paraphrasing, you're taking somebody else's words, and then more or less just putting those words into your own words and telling us what you learned. These summaries will be in paragraph format consisting of at least seven sentences for each one. You are to submit both a rough copy and a final copy of each of your paragraphs. Your rough copies must be handwritten and your final copies must be computer printouts. Now this, th that, that assignment is, you know, I, I, I do have some students that um, submit uh, both their assignments as as computer print offs and some of them do their work um, by hand I'm not really that particular I, as long as I can read your writing um, your rough and your rough and final copy it could be both handwritten both computer pr print off a combination of the two it would be kind of weird to do a rough copy and print off and then do a final in by hand but I guess that could be done so I, I'm not too particular about that I'm just more concerned about it being legible and as long as I can read it and understand it and more importantly as long as I can see a uh, a progression and signs of editing so if I can see where your rough copy led you towards the the final copy then that that's totally fine for me Okay, so with that being said, I will we'll, we'll delve into some of these topics. And complete a bit of online research. To think about some, you know, some ways we could do this. And and then I think what we'll do is we'll we'll start with the we'll start with the topic itself and then we'll We'll look at some ways that we could we could specify it and sort of get down to, you know, like a subtopic or like a particular angle that you that you can talk about. All right, so just bear with me. I will start up a word document. Okay, so let's share my my Word document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this live and show you how I would do it. So this is, whoops. Whoops, this is my culminating activity. And it is called a journey across cultures. And we're going to think about our, our topics. And that first one is a, so that's a visit visit to another country so let, let's let's start with that one let's start with the with the visit to another country and just look at some potential sources that we could that we could look at um, you know when, when doing some research on another country so I mean I if you choose that one then you've got to pick a country to to go with. I will look at Peru. I don't know, that's always a, that's always a country that I've I've wanted to go to. 
So, I mean, for that one, if, if you can think of a country you've wanted to go to and possibly, you know, like a, a site you could think of. The one that comes to mind for me is, uh, I think I'm spelling that right, Machu Picchu. I guess we'll Google it and we'll see if I'm spelling that right. I think I'm not spelling that right, but we'll <laughs> we will have a look. So we'll go to Google. And I'm just going to, you know, um, planning a trip to Peru. And so, you know, one one good thing to to mention right on the onset, especially when we use Google. Now, the the way it works is the the first, f you know, four or five results you see are going to be advertisements. That's the way it works and y sometimes it'll say advertisement or in this case on my screen it says sponsored. So you know that somebody has paid to be at the top of the search result and y you might get some you might get some good results that way but I, I would suggest just skipping past those advertisements and try to get down to a different um, a different website so I've got Machu Travel Peru um, book Monday Let's see here. Frommers. Um, so this is a... Uh, so the, the Frommers people, um, they, 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 they publish uh, books. So you, 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 might want you might find these in a, in a library. Oops. Something happened there. So they're a... Um yeah, they're a good they're a good website that you can use to um to find articles about um you know, to find to find information a a about a country. So this is their this is their Peru travel guide. So we got planning a trip. We've got money. We've got um Entry requirements and customs. Ah. Let's see, my ad blocker was disabled. It's not letting me look at this. Okay, so you got you got tons of information on this website. Um so that is frommers.com. So I'm I'm just gonna put that in back in my Word document. So let's see. So some potential I'm just gonna make some notes to myself. So some potential sources for 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 this topic. They will include whoops. Am I still on the right share? Yeah, I would go to Frommers.com. So that that that's a great place that I, I I could gather a lot of information from. It's a it's a very reputable source. And let's say let's go to special interest vacations. Special interest vacations. Mm. When to go, fast facts, getting around, tips for families. Yeah, so, th there's, so there's quite a bit. Organized tours, organized tours in Peru. So, yeah, all of these things that we could, we could look at. Um, yeah, and so y you might even want to... Um, you know, plan plan your trip out. Um, you know, think about what you're gonna do to w when you get there. So a visit to another country. So um, I would say that for this one, the you know subtopics are going to be you know um, 
you're going to be picking picking a specific country and you're going to choose um you know um specific uh cities or locations that um you could visit so that that's a potential um subtopic so I if you're doing option 1 so you you know you you're picking a specific country and then picking like a specific city or site you could visit a potential source for that would be frommers.com so let's just let's just leave that as it is and whoops let's look at our second topic whoops I don't know what happens when I use this machine. It really doesn't like what I'm doing. It doesn't like me copying and pasting stuff, that's for sure. Mm. All right, so number one is a visit to another country. And let's see, what is our second topic? So a high school education Okay. A high school education in British Columbia. That's very specific, but we'll see what we could do. So we've got high school education in BC. I can't really think of a way to to narrow that down just off the top of my head. So what I'll do is I'll mm. what is happening? We'll just we'll just we'll use our best friend Google and we will have a search for let's go High school education. Let's do B dot C dot Canada. Just so we know what we're all talking about here. So again, yeah, I would go beyond the. Well, sometimes the first result you get um, might be a a decent website. This 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 one's got dot gov in it, so this this could be an official. Um, bc4highschool.gov.bc.ca so okay okay study bc's curriculum internationally and explore the onshore program enrolling in a school okay okay um so let's just see Yeah, so this this looks good. So I will just I would just copy and paste that um copy and paste that that article um whoops. Why is my screen share paused? There we go. So I'm just going to go to my sources. Potential sources, and that's the uh, the government of BC. And then maybe you could do moving to BC. Let's see what else could we find out about going to so that. That's a good option. Always good if you can find like an official website you know in, in this case like the government website's a good one to do um a list of british columbia high schools by city education in british columbia the wikipedia page before you study in bc um bc private high schools study in bc hmm let's see what's this one 
And like I mentioned last week, we can always go to the Wikipedia page and, and have a look that way. Let's see what kind of websites they give us here. Um, BC Education System Performance. Ah, that's more from the from the government of BC. So th there's going to be a lot of a lot of information on that website. So just given how much time we have, I'll, I'll stop that one there. So adoption services in Canada. Now, if we go back to our Word document, or go back to our uh, let's just let's go to let's just uh, let's just Google that phrase that phrase adoption services in Canada. So we have. Again, we have lots of advertisements coming up. Mm. Private adoption agencies in Canada. So there's the beginnings family services. Um, I've got focus on the family.ca. Let's see, they've got um, Children's Aid Foundation. Here we go, the Children's Aid, Aid Foundation. So they've got an article that says adopting or fostering a child from the child welfare system in Canada. So that that's kind of like, you know, what I was talking about earlier about finding like some kind of a some kind of a unique article. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and go back to my my Word document. And my topic 3 is Adoption services in Canada. Is that right? Adoption services in Canada. Yeah, so that that's good. And then, you know, my, my subtopic here would be, you know, um, you know, adopting from the welfare system. So that's just one specific angle I, c I could look at, and I've got my source down there. So just, we only got a few minutes left here. I just want to keep moving along. So the importance of, the importance of volunteering. Okay, so there we go. Let, let's have a look. Let's go back to our, our Google search. And let's do the um, let's do volunteering in Canada. See what comes up. We have uh, Canada.ca. We've got the so that that's the official government of websites uh, or uh, the Canada.ca website. Volunteer in Canada. Volunteerworld.com volunteer um volunteer and work in Canada volunteermatch.org volunteer connector okay let's have a look at that canada.ca one mm. eh, that one's okay that one's not getting me too excited um We got the top ten programs in Canada for volunteering. That might give us some some ideas here. So we've got um, Island Life Caretaker, Abandoned Cats Caretaker, Critter Caretaker, Arctic Huskies Caretaker. Um okay, so these are all like kind of animal related. Um Okay, volunteer world. Okay, well, I will copy and paste that, and put that back in my my Word document. And let's see, number four is volunteering in Canada. And I'm just going to copy and paste my article in there. So that's 
and then you know I think uh, a subtopic for that one might be um, working with animals, right? A as a is a potential volunteer opportunity. Immigration to Canada. Let's go to Google. Let's do immigration to Canada. I'll put the year in there just to see what that changes my search results, right? Um, so again, those are all my commercials, immigration in Canada. Okay, here are 13 ways you can immigrate to Canada in 2023. So this is from immigration.ca. So if I go back to my, my Word document, I've got topic number five, which is immigration... to Canada and nope I want to do immigration.ca all right let's get all these up on the page at the same time and then we'll, we'll take it from there so violence and the media and Inuit culture are our final ones to look up so same with that last one I'm gonna I'm gonna put the date I'm going to do violence in media 2023. Maybe Canada. Maybe get a specific um, specific angle on that one. So I'm just going to skip all of these paid ones. And let's see what I have. I'm getting a lot of news articles. Police reported violence. Um, let's see. Digital gender-based violence inform. Hmm. Media violence and its effects. This is media. Oops. It's not letting me click on that one. Um, hmm. Let's just let's just do violence in. Let's try this violence in the media. Ooh, 2013. So that seemed like a pretty cool article, but I'm going to try and find something a bit more recent. You know, it's it's good to find stuff that's a little bit more uh, 2012. Um, and this one was published. Hmm. I'm not sure when that one was published. Media violence and youth aggression. That's the Lancet.com. What is the impact of violent media on mental health? 2022. Okay, I like that one. So verywellmind.com. There we go. So I'm going to go back to my Word document. And I've got topic six. We have violence. Violence in the media, and I'm using that verywell.com, verywellmind.com as my example. And then my last one is, of course, Inuit culture. Uh, 
And if I go back to my search, open up my Google search here, and I go Inuit culture. So you're just getting a sense of what's out there, and that's just going to, you know, you see what you like, you see what you don't like. Um... Yeah, I don't want advertisements. I don't want companies. Um, windows to the universe. The Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, I wonder if they have information about... Oh, that's awesome. Okay, perfect. So I I it's an advertisement for this book, but that's it's got a lot of information that they're, they're going to give me for free, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include them. The Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada. That's a really good resource. I mean, if you have access to that book, that would be awesome. That would give you lots of information about them. And then we've got the World Culture Encyclopedia. And there we go. So I've got my two sources that way. And so, you know, I, I, I would suggest that you do this as well. You know, go through all seven topics, Inuit culture, violence in the media, immigration to Canada, volunteering in Canada, adoption services in Canada, and high school education in Canada, BC, and a visit to another country. So if, if it was me doing this, I would pick Peru. So I would talk about a visit to another country. I would talk about Peru and gathering information about Machu Picchu and that kind of thing. And then if I was doing information, uh, and then I would probably do number seven, Inuit culture. And just just before we wrap up, you know, if I go back to my, if I go back to my my online research, and I find a website that I like, I can always right click on it, and I can hit print. And you can send that directly to a printer. This is 21 pages, but as you see, everything up until page uh, six is uh, is comments after that. So I would just do the pages. I'm, I'm going to do a custom range of pages, one page one page one through page six six. I'm going to save that as a PDF. Save that to my desktop, and then I can I could email that to my to my professor, my instructor. I could I could print off a physical copy, right? So, you know, the main things to keep in mind is you know who who is selling this website? Um, is is it an advertisement? Is it a company? You know, I, I made an exception with the the. Um, what did I just look at the uh, the book, the Indigenous Peoples Atlas of Canada? So it is a company. It's it's Canadian Geographic. They are trying to sell a book, but I do know that this book is in a lot of schools and has been recommended by you know a lot of Indigenous people and governments as like a, an authoritative source. So I don't have the book itself, but as you see, there's tons of information about Nunavut um, and and the Inuit culture that I can I can learn from from this web page. And again, I can just print this off. I can right-click on it. I can print it to a printer. Um, sometimes you can save it, but it, it doesn't let you save it as like a PDF. But if you right-click on it and then hit print, then you can save that as a PDF. So I, I could also save this one as a PDF. And um, that one didn't format very well. So if I right, if I do Control A. And I copy and paste this into a Word document. Sometimes that works out well too. Yeah. So I, if I just copy and paste that text into a Word document, that really did, that helped out a lot. Right? So I can just, just simply dump all that text into a... Uh, into a Word document, and then I can I can save that as a PDF, or save it as a Word document, or just send that to a printer, and then or do a screenshot of it, 
that's one final option you can do. You can hold down um, the function keyboard. That's what it's. Uh, it sometimes it's a blue lettering. So you hold down function and press print screen, and you will do a screen capture of whatever's on your uh, on your screen. So that's all the time we have for today. We will talk tomorrow when we finish off this culminating activity. Thanks for tuning in.